In honor of the angels, we have two first readings. The first one is from Daniel, and then from the book of Revelation. And as you hear them read, you'll understand why there are two of them today as we celebrate our spiritual heritage. The first reading is from the book of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat and attended him. The court was convened and the books were opened and as the visions during the night continued, I saw one like the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, he received dominion, glory, kingship, nations, and peoples of every language to serve him. His dominion is the everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled, battled against dragons. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail, and there were no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown with it. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who accuses them before God day and night. They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. The word of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship you at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all your name and your promise, when I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. All the kings of earth shall give thanks to you, Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you ministers who do his will. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. 
you are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This feast used to be just St. Michael, and I don't know when, but probably after Vatican II, it was changed to include Gabriel and Raphael, three of the archangels who intervene on behalf of God in the world. Let me be a little personal first. Michael is a very important name in my family. My grandfather, Constantino Michael Skirty, came over, and his son, my father, Frank, named his first son Michael, that's my brother. Michael in turn named his son Michael, my nephew, and his son named his son Michael, so my great nephew. So Michael is important in my family for the name. The name means quisut Deus, he who is like God. Now, the problem with Michaels is, although they may not all know that is the definition of the name Michael, who is like God, they have this thing that they are very godlike. They're all troublemakers, but wonderful and loving people. And I always say, when I meet a Michael, I look into his eyes, and that tells me everything. Michael, the archangel, has that reputation too. He was around the throne of God, worshiping. Now, you, you got to realize, we're talking about eternal life. We're talking about heaven. We're talking about extraterrestrial imaginations and experiences that we don't have. But through the scriptures, we've been taught them. And we heard from Daniel today, what he had in a vision was a vision of the throne of God. And again, it's a vision. It's not concrete. It's spiritual, but it's real. And I always like to compare the reality of our spiritual life with the reality of love. You know the love object, you know who you love, but you can't see the love. It's invisible, but very real. And if you love someone, you know how real it is and what you would do for that person. Our spiritual life is very much like that. It's, it's invisible, but it's acted on. We act through it. We, we relate to God through our spiritual life, and that's very important. And Michael is a good example of that in the scriptures where he defends God's honor. And, and you know the story, but I'll summarize it as you heard a few seconds ago. Satan got his name there. The devil got his name there. He was called beautiful. Lucifer, his name was. He who carries light, Luciferus. And Lucifer, and this is good for us as human beings to remember, this is our ancient scriptural history before creation as we know it existed. But it was in heaven. So it's ancient. It's eternal. Lucifer was created by God. God is the only person not created. He always was. He creates his beings, the angels and archangels, and their job is to do him honor. Well, Lucifer was so beautiful, the story goes, that he got, like, became a megalomaniac. He thought so highly of himself, he was even nicknamed the light bearer the carrier of light. He's so beautiful. But he said one thing that really got him in trouble. I will not serve. And he rebelled against God. I mean, it's hard to imagine that spirits can fight, and they do. Spirits are real. 
We honor the three angels today, but there are many spirits in the world. Each of one of us has our own guardian angel. So on behalf of God's honor, Michael gets rid of Satan, throws him out of heaven, and with him all of his followers. And therefore we learn in spiritual language that's the creation of hell, a place for Satan, Lucifer, the devil, many names he has, Beelzebub, Jesus calls him that in the scriptures. So there are many names for this very spiritual, strong, evil presence in the world. You notice the scripture doesn't say they sent him to hell. That's our interpretation. The scripture said they sent him to earth. And Jesus more than once talks about the earth as being the dwelling place of Satan. But it's also the dwelling place of God. Is there competition between God and Satan? Yes. And you know who's going to win in the end and who always wins is the creator, God. So that's Michael. Raphael was sent to earth to help a Tobit, a, a prophet, and Gabriel, we, know, we love Gabriel because of Mary. The most important thing is the messenger of God comes to Mary and gives her the news that she's going to be the mother of the Most High, Jesus. Angels, archangels, our guardians. I want to look at it from the perspective of the reality in the world today. You know, like we from the Industrial Revolution and the Scientific Revolution of many centuries ago, we've been indoctrinated basically that I, if I can't see it, I don't believe in it. Think of Thomas at the night of Easter when he was told, we just saw Jesus, he was here. Unless I put my hand on the side, I'm not going to believe it. Then next week, we know what happens. Jesus does appear to him, and he's invited Thomas to touch his side and his hands. But that phrase, seeing is believing, I want to just change it around. Believing is seeing. We as Catholics believe in the spirits. We believe in the holy angels. We believe in God and, of course, the Trinity. But it's not a myth out there. It's something that connects us with God as love does. Can, as love connects us with one another, this faith that we have in the spirit world is very important. In our world, translated, 21st century, I'll give you two examples of it. The presence of evil, the COVID virus. I don't care geographically where it started, that's not the issue. The fact that Satan had the influence to bring that into the world is very important. And it's up to us with our heads and our hearts and our minds to fight it, the illness, and to support one day a vaccination. That's our human response. But the virus guaranteed was inspired by evil. And we know the king of evil call the, the king of deception, is Satan. So when we look around the world and we say, oh, oh, there's illness, just, just, yeah, we can trace it biologically, whatever illness, whether it's cancer, COVID, or anything else, we can trace it biologically to a logical scientific origin. But we as Christians have information on two levels, the scientific, the intellectual, and the spiritual. So when people work against illness, doctors, healthcare providers, uh, uh, positive government officials, when they work against the virus or illness in general, they're doing God's work. When you care for one another, whether it's in a deep illness or a slight illness, and you take care and you minister to someone who is ill, you're doing God's work. I mean, as simple as that given an aspirin, given a cup of water, given an in injection, and, and take it to the extreme. When we do our health care for one another, we're representing God, who is the creator of life, and we're diametrically opposed to the evil of illness and Satan. Make it clear, when someone gets sick, it's not a punishment 
Make that very clear. Jesus clarified that in, in the scriptures. Illness is from the earth, but the root of it is Satan, who wants to do as much against you and me as possible. As much as he can do, and I give him a male pronoun, but as much as the devil can do to pull us away from God. So we come here, we listen to the scriptures, we receive the Eucharist so we can be strengthened to fight the illness of Satan in any form, whether it's prejudice, whether it's illness, whether it's greed, whether it's anger. The angels are there to protect us. The angels are here on earth in spiritual form to connect with us, to give us the strength to fight back evil in all its levels. Historically, we know Michael has a role of protecting people in times of peril. So many monuments, France, Italy, have places in which the angel Michael appeared during a time of illness and disaster to protect people. In Italy, we have the Castle San Angelo, the castle that was Hadrian's tomb. And on top of that, there's a statue of Michael because during one of the perils and one of the plagues, he appeared to the people of Rome and the illness passed. We wait for that now in the 21st century, but so far it hasn't hit. We, we look to France, Mont Saint-Michel, beautiful monastery built on the highest plain in southern France where the presence of God in Michael can be revealed and was revealed. Those historical things help us to go back to our spiritual roots. As we pray, we are connecting with our spiritual roots. We're connecting with our faith. And we're putting that faith into action when we roll up our sleeves and love one another. I don't care what our field is. Whether you're a preacher, whether you're a domestic engineer, housewife, whether you're employed, unemployed, retired, a doctor, it doesn't matter. Whatever we do, we should ask the angels to give us the strength to improve the task in front of us. That's why they're here. God sent every one of us a guardian angel, and these three, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, distinct historical roles, but they're all ours. They're ours for our request for intercession, for the end of greed, for the end of the virus, for the end of prejudice, for justice. There are many statues, and I'll stop with this, of St. Michael with weapons, big sword, big wings, an artistic version of it, and armor, beautiful very inspirational, not necessary. It's good for our imagination, but that's not necessary. Defender of evil, defender against evil is necessary. We look to the angels and the archangels to help us every day. And we pray for our Michaels, for our Gabriels, for our Raphaels.